Senator has the floor. Mr. President, today we stand, we speak, and the clocks tick. From Galax to Gordonsville, Orange to Northampton, Fairfax to Danville, Lee County to Loudoun. County boards of supervisors, city councils, town councils wait on the General Assembly of Virginia to give them the tools that they need to provide the goods and services that the government provides to the individuals of the Commonwealth. And the clock ticks, and they have nothing. In every locality of the Commonwealth, they have nothing. I rise not to speak to 20 people over here. I rise to speak in favor of 32 people over there. Statesmanship is a legislative ideal that's often mentioned, but all too rarely practiced. Statesmanship is when elected officials act in a manner that might not be in their best political or partisan interest, but is in the best long-term interest of those who they're elected to represent. It was disappointingly little noticed in my estimation this weekend, but we had excellent examples of statesmanship here in the General Assembly last week. As you know, the failure of this body to pass either Senate Bill 30 or House Bill 30 left the General Assembly without a budget bill. For the first time since Virginia began the biennial budgeting process in 1920, we're without a legislative vehicle to fulfill our foremost responsibility and to satisfy those who serve in the, sta in the state's counties, cities, and towns. And the clock continues to tick. So last Thursday, the chairman of House Appropriations submitted a new budget bill for consideration. And as with any bill submitted after the January deadline, its introduction required unanimous consent. That meant that any one of the 100 members of the House of Delegates could have objected and prevented that bill from being considered. But that is not what happened. The bill was introduced, unanimous consent was granted, and 32 people over there acted as statesmen. The following day, members of the House had again had the opportunity to delay the process. They could have voted against waiving readings of the budget, a vote that requires four-fifths. But 21 members of the House, all Democrats who voted against House Bill 30, one might believe that that would be the case. But the readings were waived, and 32 people over there acted in a statesmanlike manner. As I noted before, 21 members of the House Democrat Caucus voted against House Bill 30, and last Friday, 22 voted against the new House Budget Bill 1301. Yet those same legislators who opposed the House Budget Plan nevertheless voted to allow that plan to be introduced and then allow it to be expedited. Statesmanship. They had the power to stop the process. They had the power to bring it to a grinding halt, and they chose not to exercise that power. Why? Why? When they could have prevented a new budget bill from being considered, when they could have slowed the budget down, why did they take the opposite course of action? Perhaps they understood just how important it was that we meet our foremost responsibility and ultimately enact a budget. Maybe they appreciate that only we can enact a budget with a bill and that even when you don't agree with a particular spending plan or aspects of it, you still have to have something over which you can negotiate. Mr. President, I'm clearly not in a position to speak for the House Democrat Caucus or to determine their motivations in allowing a spending plan which most of their members don't agree with to advance. But I do know this. They did the right thing for Virginia. They embraced the Virginia way. Today, the people of Virginia, from one end of the Commonwealth to another, in every county and city and town that depends upon this body to create a budget are waiting and the clock continues to tick. We owe a debt of gratitude to 32 people over there, the House Democrat Caucus. By adhering to a standard emulating statesmanship, they've set an example for all lawmakers enacted and in the long-term interest of those who they were entrusted to serve. Thank you.